Welcome back, Physics 30. This is the second booklet in the electricity, uh, electric current, and potential difference section. And there are quite a few objectives we're going to look at with this booklet. Uh, define and provide an example of direct current, alternating current, electric field, electric lines of force, positive test charge, electric potential difference, schematic diagram, electric circuit, ammeter, and ground. Uh, two, we'll state the convention used to represent electric lines of force in an electric field. Uh, we'll explain what happens to a charge in an electric field. Explain that work is done on a charge in an electric field if the electric force causes the charge to move from one point to another. Five, we'll explain that magnitude of work done in moving the charge is a measure of the difference in potential between two points. Six, state and apply correct units used to measure electric potential difference. Seven, solve problems involving electric potential difference. Eight, uh, recognize the, that a decrease in energy when a charge moves through a circuit uh, results in a drop in electric potential. Identify the instruments that are used to measure electric potential difference in an electric current, or sorry, difference and electric current in an electric circuit. And lastly, develop the relationship when solving problems relating to electric potential difference. So the last book that dealt with electric current, we started off with charges and then ended off with electric current. This booklet looks more at potential difference. <coughs> so first of all, going back, electric current, direct current, current flowing in one direction, whereas alternating current is current that reverses direction periodically, or you can almost think of it as vibrating back and forth. So direct current, when you have a battery hooked up to a small device, that is direct current. Electrons flowing in one direction, whereas if you plug a bigger appliance into a, a wall, um, it's using alternating current, which reverses direction for a certain cycle of time. Uh, alternating current is used over direct current with household devices because there's minimal power loss when distributing power over long distance. Two ways in which you can get electrons to flow in what particular direction, as I mentioned earlier, batteries, where one side of the battery is electron sufficient and the other side is electron has a uh, deficit, so it goes from the sufficient to the deficit side, and also generators. Uh, five other sources of electric current. So chemical reactions in which electrons are produced can cause a surplus in one area and a deficit in another area. Photoelectric, light actually dislodging electrons from something, causing, it, causing them to flow in a particular direction. Thermoelectricity, if you have two different metals joined uh, at a connection that are at different temperatures, that could cause a current to flow. Induction, um, a magnetic field moving uh, around wires will cause electrons to flow. And also piezoelectricity, actual mechanical pressure could be enough to cause a small amount of alternating current. If we look at, <coughs> the next thing we look at here is electric fields, which are very similar to gravitational fields. So if you think of a gravitational field, an object such as the Earth, exerts a downward force on objects that are nearby. So gravitation, force of attraction around large bodies. Just scratch out this, put gravitational, because I made a mistake and put electric field there for some reason. Electric field, uh, a force of attraction around not just a body, but a charged object, such as a positive charge. Classically, a positive test charge is used to determine if there is an electric field present and what kind of electric field, whether it's positive or negative. So if you put a positive test charge in the re region and that positive test charge is repelled, that means that that electric field must be positive because like charges repel. But if we put that, elect that positive charge in an, a region and it's attracted to an object, that object must be exhibiting a negative electric field because opposites attract. So that positive test charge shows the direction of the electric field that it's in. So here I have a picture of this positive test charge, this little red charge. If I put it near this object and if it's repelled, that tells it this electric field is positive. And classically, the direction, as you can see, I draw arrows away from the object here. The direction of the field is equal to the direction that the positive test charge would move if it was in that region. So if this positive charge would move away from here because like charges repel. 
So we say that the electric field is pointing away from the object because it would push that positive test charge away. The strength of an electric field, um, through a picture we draw it as having more of these vectors present as opposed to less. So this, the less number of force vectors indicates a weak field whereas more force vectors indicates a strong field. Describe how electric potential energy is similar to gravitational potential energy. <clears throat> so again, we can kind of relate this to gravity. If I look at this, if I have a guy lifting up a box, doing work, I'm increasing the gravitational potential energy of that object. So if I was to let it go, that potential would change into kinetic and it would fall back down. So we could say something very similar in an electric case. If we have two, pos two plates here, one charge positive, one charge negative, and if I have a positive charge and move it towards this direction, I would have to do work on it because I'm forcing it to do that. This test charge, would, if I just let it go, it would go right back to this negative plate. Opposites attract, like charges repel, so it makes sense that the charge would go down to here. Just like this box would naturally want to go down and hit the ground. So going against what it would naturally do, is giving work, is applying work to it, which results in a gain in energy. So work done in moving an object or charge to give it more potential energy. Over here, using your answer, to find electric potential energy. So electric potential energy, you can relate it to gravitational potential energy. The work done in moving a charge to a similarly charged plate and away from an oppositely charged plate. So forcing it to go in a particular direction. See, using the law of conservation of energy, what would happen to a charge that has gained potential energy if it was free to move? Not sure why I have that random circle right there. Uh, what would happen to the charge that has gained electric potential energy? The charge's potential energy is converted into kinetic. So if we were to let that go, the charge would go flying over here and hit this plate. Just like here, this this object here, if I was to let go, it would go smashing down to the ground. So the potential energy is converted into kinetic energy. <coughs> so over here in the, in the textbook there, there is, or in the duotang, you can look at extra questions there. I'm going to go through a few here, though, the main ones. A negative 3.20 times 10 to the 5 Coulomb charge is moved away from a positive plate a distance of 40 centimeters towards a negative plate. A force of 1.50 times 10 to the minus 2 newtons is required to do this. What is the work done in moving the charge? So this is the scenario here. Now, for distances, just like previously, they have to be in meters. So 40 centimeters is 0 .400 meters. It's a negative charge this time, and I am uh, exerting a force of 1.50 times 10 to the minus 2 newtons to move it from one side to the other. And the question is, what's the work? So this is right from Unit 3, the work energy section. Force times displacement, or force times distance. 6.00 times 10 to the minus 3 newton meters. And of course, a newton meter is a joule. So we can apply that relationship that we've learned earlier for this. Determine the work done per unit of charge. <coughs> so I exhibited that force to move negative 3.20 times 10 to the minus 5 coulombs. So therefore, what is the work done per just one unit of charge? So of course, to do that, I take the total work I have divided by the total charge I have, and that works out to be 187.5 joules per coulomb. So now that is very important because it is really the electric potential difference. So by relating it to what it is per charge, I have an idea of how much work is done per charge in this area between these two charge plates, and that gives me what electric potential difference is. The amount of work done per unit of charge required to move one point, a test charge from one point to another, and that is what voltage is. It's measured in volts. So layman's terms, we call electric potential difference voltage. 
uh, but technically voltage is the unit of electric potential difference. So one volt is equivalent to one joule per coulomb, work done per one unit of charge. So there we go, we, earlier we've defined what current is, kind of like the speed, voltage, we're looking at the energy per coulomb that each of those charges carries. So we could break that down and just make it into a formula if we want. O total work over total charge gives me big V, which is electric potential difference, or in layman's terms, voltage. So V is electric potential difference, which is in volts, or joules per coulomb, work is joules, Q is uh, charge in coulombs there. So as we can see here, the two units we can use for voltage, since it's work per work done per coulomb of charge, joules per coulomb, or volts, are the two units. I usually try to write out the whole word volts as opposed to just the big V, because you can see here the variable is also V, so there could be some confusion there. Okay, we'll stop there, gang, and we'll look at part two um, shortly. See you then.